Say that the Rayana. Uh, I have a bachelor's electric power control engineering, and right now I am uh, proudly a proud people uh, student. Thank you very much, Rayanne. Stefano Costini. Hello, everyone. My name is Stefano Costini. My background is a mechanical engineer, and uh, actually, I'm a Strategos student. Very good, very good. So then we have Stefano Fabri. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Stefano Fabri. My background is in uh, informatic engineering and uh, I currently live in Genoa. I'm studying Strategos. Thank you very much. And then we have Stefano Negrini from uh, we already you already introduced, but just to, to close the loop, uh, Stefano, if you like it. Hello, everybody. Stefano Negrini, technical director of uh, Terminal Bettolo here in Genova, and uh, participating to this uh, assessment with all the colleagues uh, and to the shipping 4.0 presented by Barbara on the mid of February. Uh, nice to be here with all of you. Thank you very much, Stefano. Then we have uh, Witty Riseway. Um, hello everyone, I'm Winter Risway. I'm studying in JSU Singapore. I'm studying Bachelor of Information Technology right now. I'm from Myanmar. It's good to be here. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Currently, are you in Myanmar or in Singapore? I'm currently in Singapore. Okay, very good. Yes. Thank you so, you, Judan Zhang. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name hello. is Zhang and I'm from China. I'm quite uh, currently studying in Singapore JCU uh, in information technology. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Yudan. Welcome to, with us. So I feel we just overpass uh, 7.45 time limit that we self-impose with the round, but at least we know, at least we just get some input. And uh, I don't know, Roberto, what do you think? Maybe we can start. Do you have a, a picture of who is around the table? Roberto, Dylan. Just some technical issue, maybe. Let me see if I can connect him quickly again. Roberto, are you there? So maybe we have some problem. I will try to get in touch back with him on another channel. So any case, let me go while we wait to get, uh, I hope. Uh, let me just introduce what we are talking about today while we wait the Roberto get connected back. And I hope that you get my voice. Uh, Mario, do you get my voice? Positive, Professor. Very good. Okay, okay, okay. So, Roberto. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Perfectly, perfectly. Roberto. Okay, okay. Just okay. question. Do you think that we can start? What do you think? Oh, yes, yes, sure. I think we, we can continue with our schedule. And uh, yeah, if, uh, we are ready to start already with, with, the, with the, the pitches and uh, the student groups. Absolutely. Up to you. Very good, very good. I'm just wondering if you have a... I, I post in the chat, by the way, the, the list of the attendees. If you have a problem, obviously it's updated to maybe 30 or second. Or, couple of minutes ago, but can give you a, a feeling about who is around the table if you don't have a possibility to accept the thing. So let me just spend a little bit to, to introduce the situation. This is a student pitch, it's a joint uh, event organized in cooperation by JCU, James Cook University, 
that have Singapore campus and Genoa University, Strategos, in fact, the Engineering Technology for Strategy and Security Master of Science, first one in Strategic Engineering in Italy, Master of Science. And we have uh, some common uh, interest among this university, for obviously for excellence and for international issue, but even in the fact of using new technology in different frameworks. And uh, we started uh, this joint pitch last year, and we organized several events in Singapore. This year we do it again in completely different framework because, uh, unfortunately, when we started, uh, we was last year, I mean uh, 2019, we was live, we even with people connected remotely, but this time we have much more constraint. In any case, this year we focus on a topic that we can synthesize in many ways, but um, the title we choose was The Future for City by the Sea Strategy and Smart Solution for the New Evolving World. And WLE Genoa and Singapore are two sea town that have some kind of specific characteristics. So we invited our student to prepare pitch, impact presentation to point out ideas and things that would address this aspect. Uh, today we will see presentation from uh, several teams and uh, they, I would like to thank all the students for the effort that they have done. I know they have exam, et cetera. And I would like even to thank all the members of IPC that uh, follow a previous meeting and current meeting to inspire and to give feedback on the presentations. Um, we created, we allowed the team to create between the two, eight people, three, eight people, and uh, to address the uh, main issue currently for town. I feel mostly all the town have this issue, not only by the sea, but for sure sea town with climate change, with the grow of urbanization, especially on the coastal area, with the importance of traffic in the global economy nowadays, at least during the last 30, 40 years, uh, there is a continuous growth on town fence in the sea, and Singapore is for sure a milestone in, uh, in Far East, not only for sea trade, but even for business, in Genoa, is for sure one of the gate to the Europe and one of the major uh, active area in Mediterranean Sea with the very big uh, tradition and initiative in this, in this sense. Um, you will have, uh, let's say, five minutes to present uh, your topic. Uh, today we have a planning that is uh, based on the idea to, to give you such uh, introduction then listen the student presentation. We will have a break after it in order to um, give the international program meeting time to discuss about that. I will invite you soon uh, the, on the um, private uh, group uh, still in this platform, in this area, to have discuss it. That is supposed to go from 9.15, I feel, uh, GMT for around uh, half an hour. Then we will present you the result of our discussion and uh, we'll identify the ranking and the finalists. And, and let's hope to have some time to discuss from another point of view. We will have Michael that will introduce the subject quickly about what is a smart city and how it's evolving in these days. And uh, then we will have a panel discussion and grow up. I would like to stress that this event is organized in cooperation between Genoa and Singapore and Shipping 4.0, that is a major event about specialized, especially on shipping. So smart city are just one side of the of the board game. The other one obviously is the sea and all the infrastructure on the sea, on the communication, on the business, etc. But um, the final present, the final awarding ceremony we run on February 12th, that will be a blended event in Genoa with possibility even to access remotely. And over there, there will be the award. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, Roberto if you like to spend a few words about uh, your side in terms of uh, JCU. Mm -hmm. Sure, thanks, uh, Agustin, and thank uh, also uh, every one of you for being here today for participating to this event. 
So uh, JCU, as uh, you may know, is an Australian university. It's uh, uh, relatively young. It was uh, founded uh, in 1970 as a main campus in uh, Townsville and Cairns in Queensland, Australia. But there is also a campus in Singapore where we are located that was uh, started in 2003. Um, the strategic intent of the university is to create uh, a brighter future for life in the topics worldwide, uh, and that is really at the center of all our activities, whether it is uh, in research in natural sciences, but also in other topics uh, like information technology. And uh, really, this is really the kind of uh, uh, common trait that links all our degrees across uh, psychology, business, education, and of course, uh, uh, science and technology. We have about uh, 4,000 students overall, so we are uh, a relatively small campus, but we are growing a new program and we are trying of course, also to expand our reach uh, and uh, our range of collaborators with other high-profile institutions like uh, uh, Genoa. And I think this collaboration with the University of Genoa is really interesting because despite uh, the very big distance between the two cities and also the uh, obvious differences, there are also several interesting similarities. As uh, uh, Agostino was saying, uh, then of course they are both Singapore and Genoa are kind of gateways to bigger areas through their port and are uh, uh, Central Europe from Genoa and for Southeast Asia for Singapore. And uh, despite being two cities that had very little natural resources, essentially the only natural resource they had was the sea, they really managed to make the most out of it through the port and then start building in a very interesting growing ecosystem of activities and industries around the, and the trading and, and the port. So there is a lot of common that these two cities have, and which I realize because some of you may know, I'm originally from Genoa, but of course I've been living in Singapore for the last uh, almost 16 years, so it's a long time. And uh, really there's a lot that uh, we can uh, do together and uh, cooperate together on many interesting aspects that are really meaningful to both uh, realities. And uh, this uh, each competition that you're having today is really one uh, early step in this direction and in the growing collaboration that we are establishing. So once again, thank you very much all of you for participating today. And uh, I'm sure that we will hear some uh, very interesting plan and uh, ideas that maybe we can even work more in the uh, future together. So thank you, and uh, then I can uh, pass the word back to Agostino. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. I don't know if uh, Barbara would like to say a few words on the um, uh, shipping for dot zero. Um, um. No, there will be um, awards on. Um, February 12, from uh, half past 12 till one o'clock. And so there will be a nice uh, opportunity in order to see everything and to know each one. Thank very you. good, very good. So just before to proceed, let me uh, say a little bit two words about the Genoa Strategos Initiative that is uh, with the JCU and the School of uh, uh, Polytechnic School, one of the um, elements that we are currently working together. Uh, Strategos is an initiative that is going uh, in Genoa University since uh, now three years, let's say. We have already the first class that is going to finish. It's a Master of Science. In Italian, it's called a Laurea Magistrale, but it means the last two years after the, um, the, the bachelor. And is stressing this concept that means that we connect together uh, modern simulation, data analytics, artificial intelligence to elaborate many data, extract information, and generating, uh, let me say, capability to support decision because we can see by simulation what will happen, while by data analytics we can understand what is ongoing. It is strongly created in connection with the companies, from Leonardo to Thales, from Itachi to Ansal, the Center, and BDA, etc., and with agency. Uh, something that I would like to stress is the concept that uh, there are similarity between the program was mentioned by Roberto, uh, that Robert, Professor Dillo, and is active in, um, serious game is active in using of uh, 
uh, new solution and development of digital twin to face with what we do. Yeah, our both reality, I feel, uh, try to stress edge technology, but in very practical sense. It's not just me. It could be games, and that's fine, but could be even, let me say, serious game to teach people things. And for sure, in, in our case, the main emphasis is on the capability to understand a little bit better than others, thanks to this technology, what is going, what is gone, and especially what will happen based on our decision, as was said by Socrates many years ago. Um, we feel that uh, today, modeling AI, artificial intelligence, i.e., if that means intelligent agents, data analytics are some way the same kind of abacus that was used by Sun Tzu, stating that the general that make a lot of computation win the battle, and the general that don't make computation lose. That means that nowadays we have a huge computational capability, a huge source of data due to the digitalization, IoT, etc. But this is just, uh, let me say, an opportunity. We need the methodology tool, and especially we need young, young engineer, young scientist, young manager in order to catch this opportunity. And this very, very transdisciplinary. Um, when we talk about strategy in this sense, it doesn't mean that we do plan. It means that we need to be able to identify the objective and even to achieve this objective. And planning is one step, but should be dynamic. You can have very different aspects from cybersecurity applied to national problem or to business problem, like in this case, where there is a port to be protected by physical and by cyber threats and even by media attacks that could compromise a strategic resource, such as desalination in a desertic area, power generation, oil terminal, and so business itself, and so on. But you can even have application very, let me say, Strategic, but in a small slice, that could be to reorganize a company, to digitalize a company, to improve the way you do that in a smart understanding of the situation and correctly in closed loop of what you do. Let me just point to quote that one came from a famous uh, person original from Genoa that was Christopher Columbus, and the next one will be from Singapore. Uh, I feel that when we look around in the world nowadays, we see a lot of issue dealing with strategy. Often many companies don't seem so wise in their strategy, many countries even, and there is some, some kind of feeling about that. Uh, Columbus was saying, Columbus discovered uh, Americas, uh, was saying that the real strategos uh, should be able to look to his own objective as way to focus his energy, should be able to fix his own objective, to drop someone and to change when he realized that needed to be updated. And I feel this is a very huge issue where engineers and managers today can support decision makers. And they needed to have support by technology to make it in a more effective way. Another important aspect that came from um, Raffos. Sir Thomas Stanford Bigley Raffles, that is quite well known in Singapore, is uh, that when you do that as a, as a leader, as a stratego, you should have the temper and spirit of the good cows and to carry him through difficulties with satisfaction and credit. So sustainability, but even fairness in doing business and work is a for sure a key of success. And I feel it's very evident even in Singapore. So competitiveness, obviously, needed to make profit and get uh, success, but uh, creating credit and satisfaction around you based on acting in proper way for a good cause. When we talk about future by the sea, obviously, we deal with problems that are huge. Today, we see presentation very specific on some idea, very quick, just five minutes. But this is a good exercise to learn how to impact decision maker, how to bring an idea. And probably we are in front of students, very young engineers. Maybe they have just a bachelor. They are in master class. They are in graduate class, whatever. In our, for Genoa, they are mostly in uh, master of science classes. But it's evident 
that is the first step forward to learn how to interact with the people that take decision, how to propose institutions and companies new ideas and to demonstrate they are fair, they are effective, they are competitive, they bring value. If we look at the picture, you can see that Singapore and Genoa are very different from many aspects, but very sea town with common issue as all the town and with major issue with the evolution of logistic and traffic. And I feel that, uh, and even of technology, it's not the case that both in Genoa and Singapore there are huge efforts in new technology development and, and so on, probably in different framework and with different context. So based on that, uh, let me say that I move back to the, um, the list. And uh, I, I don't know if some other guest was joined, but uh, I will uh, suggest that uh, just maybe if you can give uh, as member of the ICTP, the International Program Committee, IPC, if you can give uh, just a taste of what you do in a couple of minutes, uh, what is your focus? Uh, you, uh, me and Roberto, we talk already a lot, but maybe, I don't know, Georgia, if you want to explain very quickly what you do in Start for the Zero, what is your goal, what is your interest? Yes, yes, of course. So we, our interest in our focus is on technology for the zero, so the uh, so-called enabling technologies, and uh, with a core business, a specific core business in security, uh, in security, cybersecurity, and safety. So we are, uh, we help uh, um, small and medium enterprises, but also um, big companies in uh, developing uh, projects in uh, research and innovation in, uh, in using enabling technologies for security, cybersecurity and safety. Uh, as you told before, the um, Competence Center 4.0 is an association between uh, research centers, uh, big research centers and uh, um, companies. Uh, big companies, a lot of big companies, but also small and medium enterprises and uh, innovative startups. And um, the focus is on uh, uh, industry, industry 4.0. I'm uh, an innovation manager of the uh, Ministry of uh, um, the Economic Development in Italy and uh, my background is uh, in electronic engineer and uh, but uh, i'm involved in um, planning education and training uh, on uh, technologies thank you very much that's enough <laughs> thank you georgia julio maybe you can point out uh, what you are doing and what is your interest even in this case just a couple of minutes uh, okay, so uh, as core power, uh, we are fostering the adoption uh, of uh, nuclear power in shipping, both uh, to power directly large ocean going vessels, but also uh, as a use uh, in, in maritime for offshore power plant to directly produce electrical power or, for instance, uh, for, for other purposes like the salination production of synthetic fuel, all matters that are uh, extremely important. And we shall recall that most of the population of the world uh, lives uh, close to the coast. So uh, to, to use the sea as a resource uh, is, 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 is increasingly important, uh, also coupled with the, decar the, the, the decarbonization problems that, uh, that we are facing. Thank you, Giulio. Just just one more word, because when you talk about nuclear, maybe people have no I know aware. Maybe you can just spend the 30 seconds to explain that you it's a new concept. Uh, well, I, so we are considering molten salt reactors, not pressurized water reactors. So it's an old type of reactor that was tested in the 60s, but then was abandoned due to, to military reasons. There were reasons that for which the, in the US uh, the pressurized water reactor seems seemed more advantageous. And, uh, but now there are a lot of uh, companies uh, working on this uh, 
We have partnered with Terra Power, which is uh, uh, the, the biggest finance finance investor in which is, is Bill Gates. And we have recently been awarded uh, $113 million by the Department of, by the U.S. Department of Energy to, to move forward. Thank you. I just mentioned because maybe, you know, it could be confusing otherwise. It, it's very, it, it's an old technology, but it's a new way to do and it, yes. it's uh, urging to new solution, compact and uh, safe. Uh, and safe, everything should be safe, obviously, even uh, a number. But <laughs> Ansel Michael. You will have more time later, but maybe you can just point out your interest. Well, um, uh, my interest uh, spans in many areas. Uh, so I didn't mention that I also do uh, consulting uh, in Asia. Uh, so I run a small consulting company. Um, and uh, with that, I use that experience in teaching and design thinking, which is one of the areas that I have a lot of interest in. Um, and uh, in uh, agile project management. But besides that, um, I look a lot into smart city at the moment and hope to expand my knowledge in that area. Uh, I, I don't believe that you can become an expert, but at least you can get some knowledge and share that with others. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. Stefano, Stefano Negrini, maybe you can uh, give some more insight uh, quickly about your background and the interest, the problem that you bring you here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So basically, I mentioned before, I'm the technical director of Terminal Bettolo. Terminal Bettolo is a, is a greenfield terminal just opened a few months ago from the MSC group. And uh, clearly, uh, terminal uh, operators are one of the several uh, chain uh, or uh, rings of the logistic chain. Uh, we are uh, uh, involved in, in, in a first uh, uh, instance in uh, anything that relates to the interface between the sea and, uh, and, and, and the cities and uh, uh, in a wider sense uh, in the end to end for all uh, which is moving around the world. Uh, the subject and the topics uh, here by discussed are then uh, of extreme interest for, uh, for our activity because uh, of two reasons mainly. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, our business is uh, one of the slowest to react to the changes uh, so far. Uh, and nowadays changes are extremely fast uh, happening. So we are uh, looking uh, with uh, extreme interest in uh, how to uh, cope uh, with our uh, slow response. Uh, several ideas uh, comes out from these uh, uh, topics and uh, events. Uh, second, because specifically for our terminal, being a greenfield, uh, uh, it means uh, more or less having a white paper on which we can write uh, uh, anything more or less we want. Uh, uh, so for us, it's very, it's much easier uh, compared to existing businesses to adopt uh, new technology. So all in all, uh, is a is a good opportunity to hear, to listen, to learn, and to share uh, among this team. Th thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know, Roberto, if I miss anybody. I think we know. I think we have on our side, uh, yes, just uh, yeah, Michael and, uh, and Julio. So I think, uh, yeah, we are uh, on our side. I think we, we got everyone. Very good, very good. So I feel we can, uh, if I may remember, currently maybe we can go starting with the presentations, uh, if you like, mm -hmm. with the students. Uh, my people created this, I don't know if you see, it is a very simple and basic application that obviously will not work, but uh, that is supposed to extract randomly the order of speakers, okay? So, Roberto, we can use it if you like. Okay, sure. Okay. Because Roll, yesterday, roll the dice. yesterday, yes, Ali Ayakta has not test yet, but um, let's say that we say that uh, lucky 
So the fortuna, as we say in Latin, is supposed to be a major factor. And so we decide to introduce it uh, stochastically in an engineering way in our game. So I will push run and hopefully the system will not crash and give me the first uh, speaker. So let me point out is uh, I, we have here the idea that we are supposed to extract one from Genoa, one from Singapore, and to start from some side. Uh, currently, he decides to start from Genoa, but uh, in the first team to present is supposed to be the team named the Genoa 5 Intelligent Car Parking System with Anik uh, Lachance, Niriango, Ikut Kakakose, Nico, Kujalapa, Sanir Kumar, and uh, Vikas. I hope you are around the table now. Are you there? Uh, yes, Professor. So I feel we can leave. If you are ready, we can start. Let us to know if you need uh, anything to to show up your presentation and to organize as you like i shut down the screen sharing and uh, if you need anything let let's check if everything it works are you ready you can start if you like Uh, we're preparing the presentation. I'll be ready in like a few seconds. Don't worry, take your time. We are almost on time. Just six minutes of delay, but no problem. I feel we can do easily. You will have uh, five minutes. We will be not like Cerberus, but uh, we will inform you when you are in near the five minutes. So, and then uh, after we call for closing, try to finalize your conclusion if you are going out. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you can see my presentation. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Anik Lachance, uh, and I'm here representing a group uh, uh, of uh, Aikut, Kushalapa, Niku, Sanjay, and Vikas. And our solution for the C is uh, Intelligent Parking System. Um, so why, why the project? Why on Genoa and Singapore? So this issue is uh, increasing, as in the traffic levels and parking saturation affect the quality of urban life in most settlements, especially the settlements uh, that are reserved uh, for touristic areas. So these areas are usually attracting more visitors. Um, and this is why uh, we chose um, this project. So if, this, uh, if these places like Genoa and Singapore are not well managed, it can be a serious problem where the, the, the number of cars are increasing every day. So in, in here in Genoa, we're counting, it's a small city, but we're counting 300,000 cars plus. And in Singapore, it's like a million cars, vehicles. So, and also that uh, due to COVID, so many people have been buying cars. Uh, 
So this is a, a, a presentation of uh, like how the trend, in, like uh, the car selling trend is going. And um, so another thing is that um, on, a, uh, on a Italian podium, Liguria or where Genera is situated, 50, it is uh, ranked 52.9% uh, in terms of uh, stress parking. So people are so much talking about uh, how they're stressed, finding uh, parking, and also in uh, Singapore, it's the same thing. And also these things, uh, the when parking it, when, when parking problems are increasing, this is also increasing uh, uh, carbon emission uh, or the, the gases or the total emissions are increasing on on a high level. The so nitrogen monoxide, um, sulfur oxide, or uh, due to the uh, traffic and these uh, these are high uh, percentage uh, in terms of contributing to the total emission and uh, so why this project uh, what do what do we want to achieve so the first thing we want to achieve is reduce time spent searching for parking and costs associated with it uh, in terms of cost we're talking about the uh, fuel spent while looking for a sport and um, all the costs uh, that is involved in uh, looking for parking. And also we want to reduce the density of traffic. We believe that uh, if, the, if people easily find the parking, uh, in that way traffic would be smoother. And also another thing is that we want to reduce stress associated with looking for parking. So we want people to, to get less stress uh, in, when they're looking for parking. And also we want to organize, um, create an organized and secure parking system. So I will be explaining more on this subject as we talk about how our system works. And so we want to create, in the end, we want to create uh, more attractive cities, cities that are, are accessing technology. So this is our solution. Um, what we are proposing is an intelligent parking system that we have a that we have our drivers locate easily and, sec and secure a vacant parking space. So with the, help, with the help of sensors, cameras, and all IoT devices um, that we be sharing information about a, a vacant sport. Um, so this strategy will also uh, help. Uh, this is specific to our cities, the cities that are near the port. So this strategy will be helping um, uh, ports, uh, port related vehicles, uh, those uh, cars that are involved in logistic activities to, to be able to have um, a reserved parking space for their own. And also they're always claiming that they do not have security services. So in this case, we're, we're going to solve the two main problems that uh, these um, cargo, these um, logistic activities cause are facing, which are the parking spaces and security services. Talking about security services with the uh, use of our cameras and sensors, we, they will be able to detect, um, it's a one in, like, it's the two in one uh, for them, as in they'll be able to, to, secure, to have security for their vehicles while waiting for the uh, shipment, uh, all the logistic activities involved, and also they'll be having their spaces uh, reserved for them. In that case, security will be ensured at a higher level. So in terms of like all this uh, comes to environmental conservation, so the level uh, we, we, we think with this project, the level of pollution will be very much reduced as the flow of vehicles will be smoother, and in this case, reducing uh, the emission of um, 
gases. Uh, so how this is built, I explained a little bit uh, about this. Uh, so, so the data is collected by sensors, cameras, IoT devices, and uh, so they will be providing information uh, on uh, free or occupied spaces uh, for parking. And also, I think that's it uh, in terms of the, these are built from, it, it used 5G and IoT and new integrated technologies. This is like a, a picture of um, uh, how it, it kind of looks like. It's not very clear, but it's just uh, a picture of how it looks like. So I think that's it for me from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be very glad to have them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so there is any question around the table? Everybody like to raise? Uh some point uh, i have some questions go yeah. uh, my first question is that imagine that there is just 100 parking slots and we have 200 cars so what about this you know because uh, when the, we have a uh, rush time okay Many people comes from the city around our main cities. For example, if we are living in the Genoa, some people come from the city near to Genoa to work here in the Genoa, and there is uh, there are no uh, parking lots for them. Uh, what about them? How we can manage this? Because the number of the cars is more than the number of the parking lots. Is this pro is this uh, solution can solve this problem? Uh, I. I do not think the number of cars is more than a uh, number of uh, uh, parking slots. As in, uh, what I think is the more of uh, people, like uh, people do not uh, easily, they're always looking for a, a, a slots near where they're going, but there are enough uh, slots uh, in the area. So the thing is that they can easily detect uh, nearest uh, slots and be able to find like find it easily instead of going around uh, maybe going to where the let's say they're going to an office B and uh, the office B is um, there's no space in office B but there's um, a space in office D that is near office B instead of going to office B and block some other cars that are going there or in that area, or he, he already knows that there's no space there. Instead, that person will go to like office D and park his car there instead of like blocking uh, the circulation. Yeah, that, that's, how, that's how it works. Okay, thank you. There is a question from Michael. Uh, I, I have a comment uh, to this. Um, so, um, the the number of cars is a growing problem in most cities, and uh, uh, traffic is is hell everywhere. Um, so uh, the the issue you are trying to solve here, I see that um, a lot of cities are trying to solve it, and um, it's a good idea. Uh, as you're trying to do to identify one small area. So you're looking at parking spaces, that's good. Um, in Singapore, for example, uh, they are trying to automate this so you get an app uh, and you can find out where's the next parking space and you can plan your your day where you want to go and then you can you know go there and then park. Uh, you can even do um, a payment for parking by the app so you don't have to go and find the particular machine and then find out if you have coins or, 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 or whatnot. Um, but um, at the higher level, there are some other problems. Uh, some of the problems relate to the, uh, the city level or governmental level uh, strategy. Uh, so there may be some, um, some lobbying uh, with the government on uh, creating policies to reduce the flow of traffic um, some of that could be uh, possibly solved by 
looking into the different different uh, mobility strategy. So in Genoa, I'm not, I, I've never been to Genoa, so I don't know what, how is the public transport there. Uh, but uh, let's look at Paris. Uh, so Paris has some um, uh, some solutions to that where they combine the opportunity to make use of uh, public transport and uh, private services um, in order to help people to move in or travel in and out from the from the cities and with that uh, reduce the number of cars that comes into the cities. Um, so that's just my comment to this. Yeah, OK, thank you. Thank you for your comment. And uh, uh, we, we know it's uh, it's very it's not very easy to solve this problem is if the government or the policies are involved. So we this we think this is this can be flexible to uh, like toward the government uh, to to whether like what are the plans for we for the governments in terms of uh, solving these issues. So this is something that uh, cannot be possible if the government is not involved in. So thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. I feel that we can move to the next presentation. I ask another extraction to our stochastic to our dice. So let's push. We get uh, JCU2, quality of life for seniors with Smart City of the Future, within Smart City of the Future by Jizi Zhu, Fang Lu, Axel Zhao, Xuan Weifo, Clement Ang Liang Sia, Lu Wang, Win Tri Wuzwe, and Coin Gang Fan. So I hope you are there. Um, yes. Uh... Very good. Okay. Welcome to be here. Don't worry, take your time. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes, I see it. That is still, uh, you can yes, put you can. on screen. Okay. So, hello everyone. I'm from group JSU2 and I will be, I will be presenting about our mobile application called SafetyNet. Our application falls under the topic of improving the quality of life for seniors within a smart city for the future. We would like to achieve a safety net for seniors in most aspects of life but also a chance to access the internet safely. So these are the sketches by our group mates in from the design sprint. Um, all ultimately were some sort of application, we were, but we're addressing separate issues. Uh, the first two are internet security related, followed by new access, voice control, easier taxi flagging, and a hub for multiple applications. This is our Zen voting to choose which was the best idea. And this is the storyboard, like the issues that we were going to solve. This storyboard one is where this elderly lady is complaining that there are way too many internet related applications and how it is hard for her to read anyway if she manages to use it. So her grandson introduces her to our app that alleviates many issues she is facing. And the next storyboard is where two older men are meeting at the coffee shop for a drink and one complains about how complicated using public Wi-Fi, especially since there is no standard. So they talk about the old times and how they don't think they would be able to adapt to a new age of electronics. Then one of them realizes an app exists, which is our app safety net with a button press, with, a, with one button press, they are connected to a nearby public access point from the coffee shop. So they're glad that the problem is solved. Here's our first paper prototype. And this is also the, another pro paper prototype, which has uh, multiple login methods with one being face ID. And most of the features are similar to the next, to the, to the paper prototypes. So our, for our application prototype. So this is our application 
prototype that we created. So firstly, this is our first login page. So, and let's assume I sign in with face ID. And then, so here we can see our design and focuses on big buttons and uses white and black, which color is needed to indicate something since it has the highest color contrast. At the top, there's a voice control function too. So, and let's check out our main internet as a selling point, which is we click the Wi-Fi first and then with a simple click to enable the Wi-Fi, just simple, then the Wi-Fi is not active. And these wireless uh, at SG and Wi-Fi at Changi are both real public wireless networks in Singapore, and they both have different login info needed. This should streamline the process and give seniors the access they acquire. And going back, there is a secure. There's a security. We click security. Then there should be an ad blocker to stop seniors from being tricked into clicking malicious ads and pop-ups, and also a scam call blocker to stop them from being scammed, which is a serious issue here. And also an OTP handler to handle one-time password, since I noticed most older folks cannot handle OTPs. And finally, there is a big pundit button here. Uh, so if anything happens to a senior on the go, this allows them to quickly alert their emergency contact and broadcast their location, which is share my location. And there will be a sending message and a calling. Going back, there is also a secure browser, which is a problem. Uh, a problem nowadays is that many people make malware browsers and malicious websites are everywhere. With this secure browser, uh, built-in, seniors need not to hand for a browser to use and a lock icon, this green lock icon indicates which, site, which sites should be reputable. Going back, there is also a live section, which is divided into news. So that uh, this section is like a newspaper that are accustomed to different categories uh, when we click to the local there will be news featuring from reputable sources so they don't get baited by the fake news and with an adjustable font size for different people and when we go to help uh, here there's a few features that already exist but incorporated into our app and additionally here's the point is to make booking appointment online easier for senior citizens. So when we click appointment, here we can book or manage appointment. And so booking is a self-explanatory and basically just an easier way to book. Like when you click this, then you will have the book appointment. Going back, to manage the appointment, here is how it is done. So if there is a appointment book, then it will be the appointment will be shown here. And even with this red button, then even this gives the option for telemedicine and which is to stop seniors from exposing themselves to the uh, to the pandemic at the at the clinic. I'm um, going back and there'll be the transport transport. Uh, finally, the transport public transport is where seniors can find out how to get a, get to a place. There are many apps on the store like this in Singapore, but um, by integrating it, it makes a lot easier for them to surf through it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is our prototype and that the our group created during the design sprint. So yes. Thank you very much. So if there is any question around the, the table. May, maybe I can pose you a simple question. Yes. 
So I don't feel so old, however, but <laughs> okay. silver economy for sure is a major issue. And by the way, I don't have statistics on Singapore, but Italy, by the way, Genoa is one of the oldest town in Italy that is one of the oldest country in Europe. And this is a common demographic major issue in all, the, let me say, developed country, I feel, at least in Europe, uh, with um, the traditional one. So it's for sure the subject is interesting. Um, however, my question is, uh, yes. currently there are, uh, do you feel that your proposal, your design, should be in some way even uh, shaped in a way that could guarantee to understand how to better improve the service because uh, obviously this is a proposal, but I feel that probably just by using the old people will understand what they need, what additional, what are the most, let me say, ergonomic or coherent with their mindset uh, service and way to provide that it is. How do you think about to deal with this issue? Because one of the problem, even in Singapore, if I think when you introduce the app to tracking people, uh, I remember that uh, despite Singapore was, is, let me say, quite technological, uh, just few people, not, not few people, a lot of people, but in percentage, limited of people use the app for the at the beginning, even because a lot of people, if you consider not re, not uh, wealthy people, not young or middle-aged people, have a problem in using even a smartphone by itself in configuring, in keep it update to be able to download an app in order to maintain. It is even something that sometimes even middle-aged or young people don't do so so precisely. And it was limiting something that was expected to have a huge impact. And the same obviously happened even, even much, 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 much more in, in Italy and the European country. So do you have anything in mind that could help to walk around this big obstacle? Mm -hmm. um, um, I'll... Most of our apps, we kind of focus, just focus on the design part, like making a like bigger phone and just larger button. For like, we focus more on the interface of the applications rather than like going deep into the, uh, the, features of it i'm not sure yeah. okay yes. that's fine no problem it was just okay. to, to promote the discussion it's it's perfectly any okay. other comment uh yes professor i have a question question yes 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 uh, so, uh, like, uh, what I was thinking is, uh, how are you going to to um, how are you going to get money from from the app basically? Because uh, generally speaking, uh, apps they get money from uh, advertisements, yes. which which obviously won't, you won't be doing this because uh, yep. that defeats the purpose. Yes. And yes, and the most of the apps well, I'm looking at, like Wi-Fi, for example. Uh, like nowadays, the phones does that like automatically. Like they detect the Wi-Fi and connect automatically. And for example, passwords. So there is a Google, for example, that could propose the password and uh, remember it for you. Like I, I personally don't don't know most of my passwords. So um, and it's free, obviously. So how yeah. are you going to like to to convince people to use your uh, application? Uh, despite having the uh, free version. And obviously you're going to pay for like most of your services, uh, <clears throat> news feed and health, etc. Okay. Um, we could, 
Uh, we could try getting a uh, fund from the government because it's better for the people. Okay. I um, mean, maybe we could get funding from the government because it's it's for seniors, right? So we could collaborate with the government for from uh, developing this app. That's what we think about yet. Okay, very good. <laughs> yes. So thank, thank you so much for your very nice presentation. We can mm. move to the next. Let me share the screen one second. Maybe you can stop sharing just to avoid to overshooting the. Okay, let me check if I can go to the that one. So I do a next extraction. Genoa 3, efficient integration of renewable energy. Nabil Lalali e Hussein Aoun. So I stop and I leave up the floor to you. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, share my screen now. Uh, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, not uh, not in presentation mode, but. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Nabi Lalali. Um, I'm an electromechanical engineer. Uh, so we're here today to propose a uh, like it's not it's not a. Um, it's just a small integration like a proposal. So efficient integration of renewable energy in smart cities. Uh, okay. So renewable energy is a great alternative to fossil energy, but it poses great challenges to be integrated into the traditional uh, grid. So we have here a traditional grid, which is be, being used uh, from 1870s. Uh, this the same structure. But the current structure is impossible to integrate renewable energy into the grid simply because it will create disturbance. For example, uh, the inconsistency of production due to the environment's influence, obviously, uh, storage capacity for big amounts, uh, security, etc. So uh, this is the smart, uh, smart grid structure. So uh, the smart st uh, structure is based on uh, monitoring uh, and extracting data uh, of real-time usage from the consumer and the producer of energy. So it has qualities, uh, self-healing, uh, flexible, predictive, interactive, optimal, and secured. Okay, so we have a stru uh, structure and management. So we have here command and control, uh, controller using artificial intelligence for training models using real-time measured data from the consumers and the providers to recognize variances from ex expected behavior using the APD algorithm, which is approximate dynamic programming algorithm, which con con continuously uh, computes the optimal set of actions for most optimal output. <clears throat> So we talk about security, which is a, um, a deep and complicated subject. So we're going to say using cloud technology and blockchain data structure. Okay, so we're going to talk about the concept from a financial point of view. You can finance your uh, project using various uh, resources like public funding, private funding, uh, government funding, etc. But unfortunately, smart grids with big scale implementations based on cost benefit analysis is not beneficial on short term like the net profit uh, value is negative uh, mostly like you you have to wait for 30 to 40 years to, to start seeing the, uh, the benefits but more a conservative approach starting from monitoring data and microgrids is a more applicable way of doing it 
Okay, here we're, we will set some uh, some examples on how we're going to use uh, the produced energy. So what we have here is the use of energy produced in the street lighting with a combination with a smart system based on sensors that could detect the presence of cars and people to adjust the intensity of light. For example, if it detects, it will uh, augment the, uh, the intensity. Otherwise, it will then for optimization, uh, op optimizing the consumption. And it could be used for surveillance as well, since we're already installing sensors and cameras. Also, we can use our production to uh, supply certain elements uh, of the city. Like schools, for example, we have like a, a, a map of Genova showing schools, showing um, as well uh, museums, for example. And we have as well a uh, car station, car charging station, electrical car stations. So it uses uh, continuous uh, energy. So it doesn't matter the quality of energy because uh, it will be transformed anyway. So we can con control our production by knowing exactly the real time demand and also having a limited number of consumers with a clear consumption pattern. OK, and we have um, so this is a graph that shows uh, the, the red graph shows the electrical consumption during the day of a city, for example. So we have uh, a period of time where the consumption rises a lot comparatively. We call it peak demand period. So we could inject our uh, produced energy in peak demand period. So we can lift off the pressure off of the grid, uh, obviously. OK, and uh, so this is the, I think, the last slide. So we'll, this is the graph that we that we seen uh, earlier, which shows the consumption pattern. And we have here the value of, uh, of electricity, the price of electricity. We can see that the price and the consumption are uh, similar. Obviously, the uh, electricity price uh, follows the demand. Okay. So the idea is to introduce a pay-to-use service that could allow the user to know exactly their consumption status and electricity prices. So we can see here, it's, it rises four times, uh, literally. So by maybe it's an app or, uh, for example, on your phone that shows you your consumption using the devices that are installed in, installed in your house. And you can shift your activities. For example, if you have to use uh, your washing machine, for example, at this period, you would do it on an, uh, a different period of time. So you, you uh, optimize your uh, consumption pattern, as well as uh, by, by adjusting the consumer's consumption behavior for a com more consistent uh, consumption throughout the day for less severe peak consumption and more stable prices. So we try to smooth out the uh, consumption pattern and get it more consistent, consistent for a uh, I'd say more optimal uh, results and less pressure on the grid. So uh, I think, okay, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So a very nice presentation. You have, uh, let's see if Danny Bobby would like to pose any question. Uh, hi, yes, I'd like to ask a question. Sure. <coughs> Sorry. Can you go back to the slide where you showed the, um, the street lamps and you were talking about how they will illuminate if there's a person there. I think it's slide eight. Okay. Uh, can you see it? Yes, yes, I can, I can. So this system has uh, sensors that can detect cars and people, yes. Um, so I'm, yes. I'm, I'm sure that like, uh, like Singapore, uh, Genoa probably has a few stray animals. So wouldn't the presence of the stray animal also cause the sensor to sort of illuminate, causing you to, despite how little, wouldn't it cause like some energy loss? 
Yes, obviously, uh, so a good question. But the uh, the sensor system, it would be a combination of um, uh, like multiple sensors, maybe temperature, maybe it could have like artificial intelligence uh, system to it that could detect the behavior. So a uh, human obviously is not, like it wouldn't act like a raccoon, for example. <coughs> so we're using the artificial intelligence that you can train your system to recognize the uh, the behavior therefore recognize what is it's uh, looking at. I see, I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I feel that that's good. Uh, if there are no other questions. Agostino, uh, yes. um, Stefano here. Uh, I also have uh, a question for Nabil, maybe a, a couple sure. of questions. Stefano, go. Okay. Uh, there are uh, a number of uh, solutions similar to what you are proposing coming out in the market. So I am curious to uh, to have an understanding on what do you think your proposal has uh, of a plus compared to to the alternatives that, that may be in the market. That's the first uh, question. And the second, uh, uh, if you have considered the smallest size of your uh, of your solution, uh, which kind of uh, smaller size it, it, it could be uh, in terms of implementation. OK. So it's basically your your second question uh, responses to your first question. So what we're trying to say here is to do the small in implementation. So the big implementation is costly and uh, obviously the renewable energy at this point in time is not um, how to to say it, it doesn't give you uh, the benefit that you need. So we're trying to uh, do it in, on a small scale and focus it on certain elements of the uh, the city. For example, here uh, street illumination. Here, for example, we said schools. For example, uh, car parking. Uh, car charging stations so small scale is for for now is more of, uh, makes more sense okay thank you Nabil good and clear okay thank there is you. A, a last question from Michael uh, yes um, uh, it's a very interesting uh, presentation and uh, and uh, in in Denmark for example they have um, uh, achieve to uh, actually uh, pull back renewable energy into the existing grid um, and uh, that is basically just on demand. I don't know how their uh, grid is actually managed but microgrid is uh, possibly a good way to go um, and in, uh, in Bangkok there are for example one hospital where they install the microgrid where they make use of solar energy to power the hospital and the excess of energy is then sold to the neighborhood, uh, so the neighboring building and then uh, using it. Now, my question to you is, um, you mentioned blockchain. I'd like to know, uh, uh, I'd like to understand how blockchain is uh, being used in your solution. Uh, uh, okay, so obviously like, uh, this is a uh, a small study. It's not as big as it's supposed to be. So the blo the blockchain is a, a data structure that that uh, stores data in blocks. So it opens a block, stores the data, and closes the block. And it's un uh, how do you say unchangeable. So it would be hard for hackers, for example, to go into the data and manipulate it. It could be more secured. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, what is it used for in your particular solution? It's used to secure the um, consumer's data and the, and protect the uh, the producer's data. Obviously, it's all about the data that is uh, uh, trying to protect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, we, we can maybe talk about blockchain later. Uh, I don't want to uh, take too much okay, time. OK, yes, perfectly, because uh, I, I'm not yes. very acquainted with the concept. That's why I'm. Uh... <laughs> that's OK, that's OK. 
Thank uh, you, Michael. Very good idea. Very good idea. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nabil. Very good. So let me share what very quickly. We are a little bit behind the schedule, but the schedule is done to be adapted. So let me check who is the next. I run again. And JCU3, Plastic Waste in the City, the Environment and the Sea. It is delivered, yes. supposed to be delivered by Antonio Benny Jonathan, White Tan Fam, Yai Xing, Kuyang Liang, Zhang Zhang, and Sven Zinkar. I apologize for my speech. Uh, fam, are you giving the speech? Hello? Can Hello? you hear me? Yes. So, yes. Ah, my okay. name is Zhou Yutan. I'm from JSU. Very good. Okay, uh, let me see how to share the screen here. Take um, your time. Okay. 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 Hi, can you see this? Yes, now yes, not yet in full screen, but uh, we see. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Zhang Yutan from GCU, where I'm in group 19, and these are my group members. Um, and this this is our storyboard. Uh, our uh, we are uh, we are uh, making an app. Uh, uh, let me try again. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here to share our app with you. In the midst of enormous challenges we're facing these years, environmental issue has been aware by, all, by more and more individuals. Today, I would like to introduce our app on helping people reduce the plastic waste, which is kind of normal in almost everyone's house. And we got the storyboard here to show how our feature would help people in real life. This storyboard one, shows our, one of our feature of scan. The scan. The scan system would help people to identify their products is recyclable or not, and to help people easily to uh, recycle. Uh, the, our storyboard too uh, is a map system, uh, is a map feature um, where people can find the nearest recyclable bin and to uh, dump their recyclable trash. And uh, all team members have made their paper prototype, and uh, we select the two of them uh, to be the best, uh, pro to be the first best and second best prototype, uh, paper prototype, so that to make our uh, wireframe prototype. Um, this is the second prototype uh, we think is very good. Uh, the based on the based on these prototypes, we made our wireframe prototype. Uh, okay, so let me show you the prototype here. I need to change the screen, so please wait. Hi, can you see? I have a problem seeing this transparency. I see just. Yes, this is my prototype. Okay, okay. that's fine. All the screen, uh, uh, the screen is green and a welcome page there. Very good, I see it. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, here we go. This is our welcome page. Our group decided to make it green and vibrant so that to give our users a pleasant experience when they are using it. And here is a circle. Uh, touch it and you will go to the main page of our app there. Uh, let's take a quick view of these programs. The first one is our scan system. I mentioned it before. Uh, you can see the instruction up here. And the icon here, you can touch it. Then you will come to the scan page. 
uh, which will use the camera on your phone. Uh, the picture of your of your pro of your product will go here. Allows you to check for garbages that are difficult to identify. Just simply write down the descriptions here and submit submit it. Our app will immediately give you the result. You can either accept the result or redo the process again. When you accept the result, uh, our app will memorize it and count it in the waste uh, percentage recorder. Uh, okay, let's go back to the main page here. Uh, this is the this is the this is my favorite part, the recycle and save feature. I got a lot to talk about it. For this is the one feature that the user will earn money from saving the world. I mean. You are saving the world, and the best part of it, you make money from it. Okay, so first we can see a picture here. Uh, this is the recycle and save machine. Our app plans to work with its company, so the reward you get from recycling bottles will directly goes to your balance on our app. If you are not familiar with this machine, just click on the picture. Then you will jump to a page that will introduce the machine and tells you how to use the machine. To find out more, just click the button here. You will go to the web page of this company. Now, now let's go back to this page. Um, we support our app support uh, researching histories so that to view the amount of bottles that you have recycled and the amount of money you have earned from it. Um, a certain period. Okay, let's go back to the main page again. This is the balance uh, I mentioned before. Um, you can see your total balance here. Uh, uh, and these monies are basically come from the uh, rewards you get from recycling bottles to the recy uh, recycle and save machine. And you can fill your details here. Uh, again, in a, in a certain period of time, you can see where your money goes to and how you earn your money from. Uh, then uh, these are the payment methods which will support these methods to purchase things that you would like to pay. Um, and this is the alarm system. Uh, allows people to set clock before doing something. Uh, then we offer shopping list uh, for our users to edit. When the shopping time is near, the system will pop up a window and remind the user to bring their own bag. We got the map system. Um, the map feature shows the nearest recyclable bin, volunteer groups, and most importantly, the recycle and save machine. Um, we allow users to type in their location for more specific orientation. Then we have the volunteer feature. The volunteer program is where you can seek help from volunteers and join one of them. The name of the group will go here. The volunteer group one, there's the name uh, and some instructions of the group, uh, introductions of the group and benefits that you may get from joining it will come, will be the lines below, the two lines here. Uh, if you find one group interesting, just click on the Join Us button. You will come to a page where you can submit an application to the group leader. Okay, so we have the community, which is basically a chat program, but you can give feedback from here and contact us. And we got the announcement here. Announcement is like a digital newspaper where the news are all about the environment and governmental policies on plastic waste. It's like, uh, or the it's like when the government decides to increase the charge on plastic uh, bags, um, you can find the, all the news here. Then we got the mini game. This is the part where almost every children or some adult maybe uh, would like uh, um, the game uh, is we plan to make uh, to help children to learn recycling from a very young age. And it's an entertainment. <laughs> then not, uh, the last but not the least, we have the account here, down here, the, the people with this icon, uh, where you can change your nickname and profile photos. And 
as you can see here, we got the identity verification where uh, to link our app with your mobile phone, mobile number and your email to secure your app in a way. Mm. And this is the step we, we take to protect your app. And other stuff are uh, kind of normal in, uh, in every apps. So that's all. This is our app. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for your speech. So <laughs> we said we are a little bit late, but we have time maybe for a quick question. Yeah. Any quick question? I have a quick question for you, if you don't mind. Yes, yeah, um, Have you think about to use some kind of game mechanism uh, in terms of uh, a competition among the user for the people that collect more per day, per week, uh, or in some way, some kind of stuff to create some kind of engagement on the user, even with some reward eventually? Uh, you mean the reward uh, people, uh, no, users will get? That, pay, yeah. pay? No, no, that, that's fine, but that's it's money, it's fun. But maybe people that would like to show, okay, in my district, in my town, I am the one that returned more in today. I am the, the champion. I am the, the winner for glass or for the plastic or for whatever. Did you think about something like that? Yes, yes. Actually, I think about it because, uh, you know, people like to compare with the people around, compare with their neighbors and uh, something. Um, with uh, giving uh, uh, giving their uh, planet to show uh, their rank will in some way in encourage people to recycle more and to uh, do uh, to use our app and uh, something else to uh, you know, for their ego or something. I, I think about that, but our app is. Uh, uh, I don't have a, my, that much time to to add that in our app, but sure. I have think about it. Thank you very much, you Dan. And so, yeah. if we don't have any other question, maybe we can move back to the stochastic generator. And see who is next. Now the day just few one are standing, so it's not very surprising. But let me see if I can extract a new one. A new one is Genoa 2 Energy and C. Stefano Costini, Anna Bolognesi, Stefano Fabri. I feel that now you can take the lead of the meeting and give your presentation. Thank you again, Judan. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you too. Okay, um, I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully. Can you see it? Yes. Not yet. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, we wanted to talk about the production of energy from the sea, um, in particular from waves and ocean uh, and current, marine current. Uh, and the goal uh, uh, was uh, to try to see if there were, we were able to power uh, limited areas uh, of a city, like, uh, like an arbor. Um, the objective uh, is uh, in, obviously uh, to reduce pollution. Uh, we have some side effects, uh, some good, some bad. Um, the, so, uh, the first one, obviously good, is that Pollution is reducted, so the quality of life, you know, whole life, uh, is improved. And uh, if uh, the system is well designed, uh, the even the environment can uh, can uh, can have some positive uh, uh, gains. Uh, on the contrary, if uh, the system is not well designed. The, the life of the ecosystem uh, can be um, in danger. Uh, the question we were, the, our project uh, has to answer is uh, why not, in, in our opinion? Because uh, if the sea is a too big uh, resource uh, not to, to use it. As we see, as we, as we, 
as I already told, uh, it will be useful or interesting to Im you, um, you implement it uh, during the restoration works, uh, in particular of the Arbor of Genoa that uh, are uh, happening uh, in this time. Uh, the scenario of the renewable energy is uh, very critical because uh, most of the power is uh, created from uh, fossil fuels and uh, uh, only a small fraction of it, of it is, uh, is produced uh, using renewable sources. Uh, here we have a small comparison about uh, uh, different types of renewable energies and we can see that in particular the wind uh, um, Power, the wave power is uh, more constant uh, than the other ones. Is uh, related to the wind power, but is uh, its its effect uh, are more longer. Obviously, we have a small comparison of uh, some days, but uh, it's just to highlight uh, that um, can be a constant solution to the to the energy supply. Um, here we talk about the, as we, so as we already told, the Arbor Genoa that requires an average of 5.5 megawatts of energy. Uh, <laughs> that is a, a huge quantity of energy, but uh, there are projects that um, have tried or will try to produce uh, at least the same amount of energy and uh, tests. Uh, uh, have come in support of this uh, of this project and uh, said that uh, this is a theoretical uh, uh, feasible solution. So we can say that even uh, without a, a huge uh, uh, installation, um, uh, Genoa's Arbor requirements uh, can be can be uh, we can uh, uh, power. Uh, at least uh, uh, one of most sectors about the of the arbor. Uh, the question we have to answer is uh, uh, mostly how is how is reliable reliable is it reliable uh, uh, all the year, and uh, how the environment uh, is harmed by by our installations. Okay, now we have the most uh, practical parts in this uh, chart, in this map. We can see the current flow uh, in the month of June. Uh, we can take in account that the one node is equal to 0 0.5 meter second, and uh, this is the velocity of uh, the water fluid. Um, next. Stay next. Okay, now, now we can see the um, most of Julie and uh, our zone is in uh, uh, northwest of Italy. Uh, actually, uh, we have one node of average uh, of our current. Uh, next, we can see the most of August. Uh, the same uh, velocity is one node. And uh, here we have the turbine. Uh, the most important part is the rotor, uh, yeah. the gear and the brake. Um, about the security, uh, the brake is, is very important component because uh, we can stop the system, uh, for example, in case of storm or in case um, of a lot of problem and uh, is an important component for the security of our system. Um, we need also uh, then convert the um, continuous electricity in direct electricity and another component is the converter. Um, then the converter, we have the transform. And um, after the transform, we can uh, um, achieve our goal uh, to um, product energy and distribute it to the general power electric electricity line of our countries. Uh, in this chart, we can see the power in, in relation to the velocity, but this, veloc this velocity is a uh, radial velocity uh, of our ro rotor, not uh, the current velocity. And uh, we can see that um, uh, in this chart, we have three uh, different parameters uh, that are the power production on electricity, uh, the velocity of tide and the rotor velocity. 
And thanks to this graph, we can see uh, what is the best correlation uh, to, to obtain um, the best production of power and obviously um, the best production, um, production of power uh, will be when the velocity of tide is uh, three, is the measure possible, and the rotor speed is uh, 30, the measure possible. Uh, we have to continually adjust the turbine uh, to um, orient it in a very good way uh, to product more electricity possible. Last time, some questions were posed to us, especially about the weather conditions and the earthquakes. So we did some research and we found that even if onshore installations can be exposed to risk, seafloor installations are vulnerable to earthquakes, but not to sea storms. And offshore floating installations are immune to risk factors, external risk factors. Um, moreover, we looked into the impact of the, the turbines on the local fauna and we found out that, uh, looking at some research, that uh, seals uh, just avoid the area, even if we don't have seals around Genoa, and fish sometimes uh, they spend time in the wake of the turbine or also can move through the turbine without harm. So the uh, turbines don't pose harm to uh, the fauna. Uh, but since fish uh, communicate uh, with uh, uh, noise, uh, it's important to look uh, if uh, the noise of, uh, generated by the turbine can have an impact uh, on, uh, on fish. And uh, uh, researchers found that uh, the, the noise uh, generated by the turbines can be um, compared to the one generated by other human activities that are already uh, happening in, in the sea, so it doesn't have... Uh, huge impact and also there's no uh, harm that has been uh, caused on fish from uh, the exposures of, of sound. Uh, moreover, uh, we looked at um, the impact of turbines on the uh, body of water that goes through them and at pilot scale there's no change in water quality and also on currents instead there can be a change in uh, sediment transport at a commercial scale um, uh, finally uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, install also uh, hydrogen fuel cells that are uh, going to be used uh, to increase the uh, reliability of uh, our turbines since the energy in that way can be stored and uh, won't be lost and uh, i think uh, that's uh, pretty much it uh, those are our references that we used for our project Thank you very much for your very interesting speech. There is any question from the floor? Well, maybe just a very, very quick uh, and straightforward question. I really like the presentation and the project is uh, uh, fascinating, but I just wonder, did you do any sort of uh, um, research on the possible cost involved and the budget required to install uh, one or the more, the many turbines that would be needed to be actually practical? Uh, we didn't look in, into um, the money uh, aspect uh, very much because there's not enough uh, uh, data online and uh, so we don't have uh, uh, answers about it. But we are not looking into installing uh, uh, a lot of uh, turbines. It was around uh, four. Uh, we thought about four turbines max. Okay, thanks. Thank you. There is another question from Michael. Uh, yes, um, thank you very much. Um, this was a very interesting uh, topic um, and uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, countries that try to solve um, uh, renewable energy by all kind of ways and um, it's not every country that have enough uh, wave uh, activity in order to produce energy. Uh, so the current is actually a very interesting 
um, way to do it uh, because most areas there are some sort of current. The question is how much is necessary. So my question are how much current is necessary for minimum uh, production and how big uh, the diameter or how big should the turbine be in order to produce enough energy um, uh, for usage. Uh, this turbine, the parameter of this turbine is, for example, three meters. And uh, with uh, 0 0.5 uh, of tide velocity, uh, the turbine is able to produce uh, one megawatt. Uh, for example, to uh, satisfy the port request that is uh, 5.5 megawatt, uh, we can install uh, four or five turbine, uh, for example. And uh, for improve the production, we um, we could install the turbine uh, in the rivers, for example. I don't know, um, but the satisfy will be request. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So we can move to the next one. That could be pretty easy, I feel, because of the from Singapore. I feel we still have just one presentation. I run it and JCU one enhancing consumer recycling in Singapore that is supposed to be delivered by Findlay Arthur Wright, Wright, Wright Munna Tanzin, Miloni Shailem, Yannick Rui Kanyang, Andy Viaya, Kevin Chen and Surya Mural and David Emmanuel Thomas. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> my name is David Thomas. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of my team could, uh, are unpresent because of they have other stuff to do, uh, exams and all. So I'll be presenting for them. <laughs> okay. Just hold on. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you all see? uh not yet oh uh, yes now yes so uh first first and foremost i apologize because uh, uh we did not we have not prepared a very uh very visually appealing powerpoint presentation for you all uh, okay. Uh, okay of course we are yeah so i'll just briefly explain what uh what we have done okay let me just open up this one so we we have we were given the challenge of enhancing consumer recycling and myself and with my team, we we created an app concept. Uh, it's, it's not an app because we created using using Adobe XD. But okay, so the app we named it. Uh, we named it Green Cycle. Okay, to stick with the team. So it is an app which a person can uh you can use your uh, Android or your Apple to to use it lah. So they can log in using multiple options. There's Google, there's Facebook, and there's Apple. So, example, if they were to log in, this would be their, their, their front page, their, their main page. So, over here, you have the person's name, their age, and their location. Uh, this location is um, based on around where they live. Okay. <coughs> so, um, the first feature i like to show would be the leaderboard feature. So, um, so this leaderboard feature, uh, like you can see over here, is very self-explanatory. Is uh, we document for that month, that month of that year, who was the best uh, in that leaderboard. Actually, speaking of that, I probably should show you all the 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 point system and everything. Yeah, so that's my bad. Okay. So the way this app works, right? Or this app concept works, right? Um. So you know, uh, you know, from our interviews and everything, we most people. Um, do not uh, do recycling due to the fact that there is no benefit to them. There's no incentive for them to do it whatsoever. So we we took a concept from Grab, which is the points the point feature from Grab, and add it into our concept. So the way it works is, I know that the picture is very uh, uh, very uh, confusing, but I'll just explain. So the, what the person can do is the person can take a picture of their recyclables, you, um, uh, typical recyclables where where near the recycling bin that they're using. Then over here they'll have their location, their time, and the date of when they are doing it, and they also have the option to choose what kind of 
material they are recycling. Uh, this serves two purposes. Because um, this camera app will give the uh, this app aims to incentivize the users by giving them points. So for one, this will prevent them from sort of exploiting the system because they have to be in the physical location and is uh, using the phone's uh, GPS and uh, time uh, date time feature. We can sort of prevent them from exploiting the system by taking a picture of the same thing multiple times and send, sending that in to get a lot of points. Uh, second, it also serves as a sort of a data collection system. So for example, if in the north part of Singapore, uh, there is like 90% of the people there are recycling in um, from the ranges of like 1 to 10 kg. Whereas the south part of Singapore, there is only like 0 to 10% of people that is recycling very small amounts. So the administrators of the app can use that data in order to see how they can improve it. Maybe they can add more recycling bins. Uh, maybe in that location, they can try to incentivize users and, and whatsoever. <coughs> So that's where the leaderboard comes into place. So most of, if most if not all of everybody, including ourselves, we have a sort of a competitive, uh, competitive uh, uh, um, feeling when we are doing something and there's a leaderboard to show. It's, it's sort of like our, my, my pride, you know, like I am the first of, on this leaderboard. So this makes use of the competitive spirit in the, peop, uh, in the users in order to encourage themselves to like to climb the ranks to say the least so <laughs> you also have this is uh, the guy so when we were having our interviews also um, we found out that uh, a lot of people um, if we, if you we were to use the carrot and stick analogy right a lot of people um, will rather be rewarded for for recycling rather than being pushed to recycling and we also found out that uh, people rather be educated on why they should do such a thing rather than being told to do such a thing because nearly uh, most of the responses we get if if the user was pushed into doing a certain action or a certain task, they would either do it in a very poor manner or they would not do it at all. So we try to add this guide in so that we can um, educate the general user or the general public on the importance. So. For example, for paper, we over here we have the types of paper, what types of paper can be recycled and why it should be recycled. It's, it's a, like a very small uh, tidbit for the user if they say they're interested in this kind of thing. So it's the same for plastic and it's the same for metal. <coughs> Sorry. So the, uh, the next part of the guide we have, we have this thing, we call the importance of recycling. So example for uh, newspaper, for example, what happens if you were to recycle newspaper? Then you will get like a you will get a small uh, excerpt. Oh, if you recycle newspaper, newspaper is one of the easiest materials to recycle. Doing so can help save up to sixty percent of the energy required to make a brand new newspaper. So it's small tips like this that will give that can teach the general the general public about the importance that we feel recycling has. So uh, okay, so now we go to the points feature. So like I say, we took this. Uh, sort of feature from Grab, where uh, Grab or Uber, if you are more familiar with, the, with that company. So, like, if you take the, if you to take a ride, you get points, and using those points, you can call, you can uh, purchase vouchers and everything. So we adopted the same thing. So using the camera feature, after you deposit, after you send a picture of what you have done, uh, so what you have uh, recycled, you can accumulate points, and with those points, you can sort of purchase vouchers uh, similar to Uber, similar to Grab, if you're, if, you're, um, if you're familiar with it. And we have the forums. So the forums is a way for us to add um, a social feature into this uh, concept. So instead of having a generic peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer or friend system where you can communicate one by one, we decided it'd be better to have a forum in place because it not only does it allow easier sharing of information between multiple users, it also can act as sort of a, uh, a hub, if you don't think about it that way, uh, with like-minded like users. And that way, rather than having to 
go one by one through people. You can have a, you can go to the forum. You can create a forum, uh, a forum page, and from there, like-minded users. For example, if you're, if you're keen on recycling, uh, at these timings or on these days, you can find like-minded users. They can join you rather than having to search for them through, um, through weird means and through the internet whatsoever. Uh, we also have the oops, yeah. We also have the map. So this, um, so this is for us to allow the no sorry, it's for the the, the user to understand where they can find certain uh, where they can find the beans uh. So for example, the this caricature over here is the person. Then there is a few beans here here that kind of thing. So this is just to show off. Uh, not sure of this should uh, show directions to the nearest bin so that the person knows that oh okay so for example there is the this bin near my place so I'll make it my my um my default bin when I want to uh, recycle um uh, recycle my my what my plastics my metal my paper whatsoever. <coughs> then the, the last thing we have is just the settings where they can change the account information and they can log out. So this is our team's um, sort of solution, we feel, to encouraging the general public into uh, doing more um, more recycling and whatsoever. So uh, yeah, thank you for listening. And yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your seat. Do we have any questions around the table? Maybe I just have a quick comment. Mm. So I would like to ask you, David, is, yes. do you quantify in any way the, the benefit that you can give by this approach respect what we are, what is go ongoing, for instance, in Singapore or in, the, I don't know if you are original from Singapore or from any other place, but what could be the, the improvement uh, you get any any figure or any idea how to do it? Um, uh, when you say improvement, are you talking uh, like increasing the number of recycled goods or improving the attitude of the public towards the act of recycling or the habit of recycling? I feel you should say it to me. No, but uh, I mean, it could be one, could be that we can have many target functions. I just okay. choose one that eventually you have any idea how to measure or, or to how okay. to estimate. Now, because if I was uh, the decision maker, I would say, okay, but we have uh, some initiative already on going. What will be the, the specific benefit? Or how, could, how could you estimate what is the benefit before we go? Okay, so um, we, we, did, we did some, some research uh, about this before we started our design. Uh, we found out that in Singapore, from the years of 2012 to 2018, um, among the public, 20% of the public would recycle. Well, while that while that is a small amount, it has been quite steady from like 2012 to 2018. It's been quite steady. However, when we reached the uh, 2018 onwards, the number of people that have been recycling dropped down to 17%. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the other year's uh, result, but from there we there was a steady decline in the public, whereas in businesses, the number has been tested at uh, overall of around 70 to 75%, which is quite high. So the way we view this has sort of a success that if, let's say that number were to jump from like 17 to up back to up to 20, or even better, goes even more like 30, 40%, that kind. Okay, thank you very much. So I feel we can move to the next. I just roll the the dice and the next one is Genoa One Pollution in Port City, a smart drone based solution. And is delivered by Oriol and Gerras, Pierre Martello, Ade Vita, Ben Lentaieri Rostrami, Daniele Sirna, and Ali Mohamed. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Or good afternoon to somebody. Good morning and good afternoon to everybody. A problem. 
Sorry, one moment. No problem. Take your time. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, uh, can I start? Sure. Yes. Okay, so uh, good morning or good afternoon, uh, everybody. My name is Pierluigi Paolo Martello. Uh, the name of our project is Pollution in Port Cities, a smart drone based solution. Uh, the rest of the team is composed by Berelian Tei Rostami, Alessandro Trivita, Ali Abdelatif Mohammad, Daniele Sirna, and uh, Uriol Garceran. We are uh, all Stratego students with uh, different backgrounds. Um, our uh, project is based on uh, high level of air pollution in port cities. In fact, Singapore is one of the most uh, world's uh, polluted airports, suffering the most from shipping pollution. The consequences of, in of inhaling those pollutants are serious. In fact, they can cause uh, uh, health problems and uh, premature deaths. Um, there are high shipping emissions uh, because its location exposes it to the densest and most frequent shipping traffic in the world. Uh, in fact, air quality level in Singapore in 2019 did not meet the expectation, especially for uh, particulate matter 2.5, uh, that are uh, the most potentially harmful to human health, and uh, ships can contribute up to 20-30% of the total production of uh, particulate matter 2.5. We have a, a similar situation also for uh, the sulfur dioxide. The government of Singapore implemented measures such as tidying industrial emission standard and managing the emissions from vehicle and is also considering building and publishing emissions inventory for all pollutant types. And in this way, it is, uh, can be better to identify different sources of air pollutant and manage air quality. But to do that, uh, we need data and uh, that's uh, the aim of our project. And uh, now I leave the word to my teammate, Alessandro De Vita. Thank you, Pierluigi. We have enough data to say that existing monitoring systems uh, could be more accurate, in particular for Genova City. We propose in a synchrony with ground station and photos from space satellites to perform real-time monitoring with advanced drone using artificial intelligence and machine learning, also able to create 3D dimensional models. The purpose is to collect a new kind of data and design forecast model, checking pollutants directly on the chimney spot of the ships approaching the Gulf and do smart measure covering large areas. We underline the high interoperability of the system and the increasing reliability of the forecast model, especially over the cities that require scanning between between land and the sea, where there are huge sources of pollution. Daniele, uh, you can go on. Thanks. In order to do this, we propose a network of autonomous drones that scans a predefined area. In particular, the drone will scan the sea thanks to their sensors, giving real-time data. But eventually, they could be used also for tracking oil spill, monitoring traffic jam, and spotting industrial accident. Now, I'll leave you the floor to Oriol. Thank you, Daniela. Um, now we will go uh, on to a basic technical description of the requirements of our project. Um, fundamentally, our project is a sensor pl platform, so we can choose between many sensors. Thankfully, uh, most of them are widely produced, such as particulate sensors, um, toxic gas sensors, and we can also add photogrammetry cameras for these other purposes that we can also use our platform for. Uh, the drone platform that we're going to use is most likely a DJ, DJI Matrice, which is the one that's most commonly used in these kind of cases, but we can also adapt if our sensors are, are lighter, we can use a lighter drone. And in terms of drone control, we will use UGCS, which is the uh, state-of-the-art um, management system for autonomous uh, drones that are used for mapping, gravimetry, etc. Um, we also have contacted um, companies that work in similar sectors. For example, uh, the Smart Citizen Project is a Barcelona-based company which produces sensor kits that citizens can have in their homes. And they've produced uh, thousands of them. And they have um, told us that we can collaborate with them and that they will provide us the required sensors and their platform for dealing with these um, huge amounts of data. And also, now we will go into a more um, social and economical part of the project. 
In terms of stakeholders, we have uh, four main stakeholders for a project. The government, fundamentally, uh, which benefits from an increased information and a more versatile way of obtaining data, and which also can benefit from sanctioned revenue in case that um, infractions are detected. The shipping industry will be the industry that's regulated, but at the same time, it will lose some of that um, public mistrust due to pollution and will have more environmental compliance. In terms of population, obviously, the health benefits and the improved urban life. And one of our main uh, pros here is the, that this will benefit greatly the um, tech ec ecosystem in the, in the city. Because obviously with cleaner air, you have more investment from other places in the world. But also when you um, take on this project, you're not only producing a system to um, monitor the air, you're, you're also gaining expertise for the institutions and the companies to use drones in critical infrastructure environments, and that will put the cities and the developers at a at, a, at an edge. Um, and also, we can have further collaborations with other uh, startups and companies that are state of the art. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, now we can uh, let's discuss uh, a bit uh, the solution. Uh, our solution uh, is based uh, to use uh, 10 drones. We can approximately cover uh, around uh, 40 kilometers squared uh, with a resolution of uh, 100 meters. Um, uh, now, regarding uh, the cost, uh, just to give a general, uh, a general understanding of the scale of the solution, uh, about using 10 drones, uh, each, uh, each one of them will cost uh, 5,000 euros. And uh, we need some um, support hardware like uh, battery station uh, charging with around uh, 10,000 euros. Uh, and the operation cost uh, will be in uh, two full uh, time uh, operators. Uh, now, uh, with uh, some externalities uh, of, of our solution, the, the understanding of the near harbor uh, pollution uh, will lead to increase of, of governmental uh, control. Uh, which will lead to an uh, enforce a policy uh, policy making regarding the the pollution and enforce the the pollution law uh, especially in the seaside cities uh, now regarding the um, the infrastructure and the critical infrastructure we will need uh, that will help the uh, uh, to get a real a real time data collection by the government uh, on the other hand uh, will uh, will be a, a fertile environment uh, for the startups uh, to, uh, to 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 start to tackle uh, other problems uh, and also uh, generate expertise for uh, for for uh, future developments thank you In the start to Ghost and Drone project, oh, we have advantages and also disadvantages. We have relative low cost with minimum in, uh, infrastructure and maintenance required. We know that providing sensor or changing them if required is not expensive. Uh, the level of accuracy increased by record, recording real-time data. And we have a system with high interoperability with, with any kind of ground station. By using a Stratagos drone, there is no need to send people to dangerous areas and uh, humans are involved on, only in the evaluation of the data. About the disadvantages, uh, we cannot use the drone when there is heavy rain and fast wind. And also we have limited autonomy of the battery. And uh, this drone has a limited range of 40 kilometers and 50 minutes. And also, there are several no-fly zones in the cities, especially near the airports or milit military bases, uh, at least. But not less important, we have the problem of cyber security. Uh, as conclusion, unmanned area vehicles offer new approaches to large-scale air monitoring. Uh, with this system, we are able to monitor, predict, and uh, act upon trends of pollution using artificial intelligence in port areas with unprecedented uh, ac uh, accuracy and uh, effect of the air pollutants produced by ship uh, on the seaside cities. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your nice speech. Time for some quick uh, question. Uh, yes, uh, I Hello, have. Mike. 
I have one question. Um, um, so th th this is a very interesting uh, solution, and I'm pretty sure that uh, even Singapore would uh, be grateful to have you you guys over and develop this as a project. Uh, they actually have, um, or they are working on a, a, a government uh, managed uh, sensor platform, uh, which would be able to handle all the flow of data. Uh, but my question here is related to your um, uh, the the drones that you're talking about. You said that they um, are not able to uh, be managed or be able to operate under bad weather. Um, what about um, high level of lightning area? Uh, so the area around Singapore, um, so Singapore and the, the surrounding islands. Uh, is heavily um, uh, impacted by lightning strikes. Uh, so uh, my question here is, uh, well, what do you see the risk um, with operating drones in such an area? Yeah, uh, for sure, this is something that uh, we have to take in consideration. Uh, one more um, at the moment that uh, we have scanned the area, maybe it's not required when uh, the weather is uh, in critical situation for sure. And um, I do not know if my guest want to add something, but, but um, we will for sure go further uh, with this information. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Oh, I feel we can uh, move. Yes, uh, um, Michael, do you like to ask something more? Uh, no, no, I, I just uh, accidentally uh, pressed the wrong button. <laughs> no problem, so, don't worry, don't worry, no problem, just solution. So we can move to the last presentation that hopefully will be Genoa 4 Smartport. By Medi Rufi, Marini, Rayane, Nagib, and then we have Anie, that probably you have to lift, and Zila. So, floor is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Medi Rufi. And our presentation is about the smart port as a subset of the smart city. And the smart port uh, can consider as a small city in the heart of the smart cities. For example, if you consider the port of the Genoa or the port of the Singapore, they can be uh, considered as a small city themselves in their cities. First of all, we have to define the smart cities. In the smart cities, uh, we have the, uh, the internet of everything. The every element in the cities is connected together to provide the information. The information is collected and the analyzing for the maximum efficiency for allocating the resources and increasing the life quality in the cities. So if we have the smart ports, we can increase this efficiency in the ports and as well in the cities because they have uh, coloration, because there is a coloration between the cities and the ports. So for this purpose, First of all, we need to collect the data from all involved parties. These parties could be the ships, could be the trucks, could be the city facilities, the port facilities, the port ports, and everything. After that, after we collecting these um, data, we need to analyzing them. So, for the uh, collecting data, we can use all sorts of the communication system, the GPS, the Wi-Fi. Uh, the cell phone, we can collect a lot of data from the cell phones. For example, we can find out the location of the truck driver by uh, collecting their GPS signals. And we have to clustering this data. When we cluster this data, we can put them in the two type of the data, the stochastic and the deterministic. Why we have to uh, categorize this uh, data? Because we want to predict and we want to set the algorithm for the some situation that is uh, that there is a need for the emergency action and for the improving the performance in the port. Actually, right now many port is working smoothly. But what happened if I don't know something like a, a disaster struck? For example, the hurricane came 
or, or unpredicted the heavy winds comes. So the port may be disabled and subsequently have a bad effect on the cities by collecting this data and by generating the other data. For example, we can generate uh, stochastic data by using the, uh, some methods. The best method here for generating data is the uh, Latin hypercube because the Latin hypercubes can cover all of the data from all range. By generating the data using the Latin hypercube, we can set an algorithm for the port and also for the cities to correlate it in the situation, in the bad weather, the sudden change in the microclimate. The next step is maximizing the port's op uh, operation efficiency. How we can use this? When we have the data, we can use the RSA method to analyze the effect of the input and the output. So, for example, we can consider what happened if the climate changed suddenly. We can see the impact of, the, of this input on the port and subsequently on the city. What happened, for example, if the trucks come to the port and suddenly they found out the port is closed because a sudden uh, hurricane is coming and no one knows about that. So the, uh, the city would have faced with the heavy traffic because of the trucks in their city. Then we have to define the scenario, define the scenario about the bad weather. By using the game theory, we can find the equilibrium for the both port and also the city, because we have two parties involved here. One in the one hand, we have the ports, and in the other hand, we have the cities. If we want to just consider the benefit for the ports, maybe, maybe we have some bad advantages for the cities and the opposite. So by using the game theory, we can find the equilibrium here for the best reaction and algorithm in the bad situation. And after that, we define the fun, uh, function, uh, function objective for the cost. When we find the equilibrium, we have to solve this uh, obje uh, function objective to find out the best result as uh, when the disaster is struck. In the second, in the next step, we have to define a model. For, uh, for these steps, we need to effi uh, effectively allocate the resources. The resources also in the city and also in the port together. For example, just imagine the power, the electricity. The electricity is generated by the power plant and is shared between the port and between the cities. If we know about, uh, uh, if we know about all of the involved parties in the cities and also in the port, we can find out the best and the most optimal uh, points uh, for the using the electricity. Just imagine that uh, the city uh, is in the uh, very peak of uh, is in its peaks of using the electricity and port it is not uh, in the rush. So we can set equilibrium here between the port and the city. The port can shut down some of its uh, facilities to help the city to use the, the extra electricity and vice versa. If it is necessary, for example, the port it is in the bad situation and it needs uh, more electricity. So the city can shut down some of its unnecessary stuff to give the extra electricity to the port. All of these must be calculating and must be predicting that we, uh, that we use the uh, generated and also collecting data. On the other hand, for the better result, we need to synchronize all the parties. For example, we need to synchronize the land logistic with the port. Each trucks that uh, are coming to the ports need to know about the situation. They have to need to know about the exact time that they have to be arrived in the ports. So we can send the data to the trucks. We can send the data to the uh, police station for the traffic lights and also for the road traffic. We can set the traffic light. We can set the uh, traffic. Uh, we can uh, we can be synchronized with the police to set, for example, the traffic light in the way that the trucks can go easily in the, in the roads without any traffic to reduce the traffic and also subsequently the air pollution. Also, we can synchronize the data with the ships. If there is a hurricane, if the port would, uh, would be closed, so we can send the data to the ships that they can reduce their speed or also increase their speed. It depends on the situation. And also for the workforce. If there is no work, if uh, we can send all of the data immediately to the workforce to keep them at the home and prevent them to come into the uh, port, which is closed. And also about the facilities. 
many times it is not necessary to use the city facilities for the port or vice versa. So if you synchronize all of this, we can find the optim optimal uh, point that the city and the port are working together for the best result. At the end, <laughs> we have the port and the city which both benefit of this collaborating. This collaborating can help the cities to increase its efficiency, the life quality of its citizen, and also reduce the cost. If you just imagine that the cities is not faced with the traffic due to the trucks, so the time, the time is being saving in the city, and also the air pollution and the subsequent uh, matter related to the trucks would be decreasing the cities. On the other hand, the port can get a lot of benefits of this uh, collaboration between the city and the, between the ports. The ports, for example, can use the facility of the city. If some disaster happened in the port and the drivers must stay at the cities, the ports can send this data to the, city, uh, to the cities, for example, to the hotels, that many drivers need to stay two, three, or maybe four days or even more in the city, and they can provide accommodation for the drivers. So the smart city uh, and the smart port, the smart port as a uh, part of the smart city must collaborate and must uh, uh, cooperate with, with each other based on the logic and based on the predictive algorithm and flowchart, which we are defining them uh, by the mathematical methods. Uh, thank you for your uh, time and consideration. If there's any question, I'm here. Thank you very much. So we have time for some quick question. Any question? Um, yes, uh, may I ask one question? So um, this is uh, also a very interesting uh, topic. Um, and uh, um, what my question here is, um, uh, you, you're going to look at a lot of data. It's a, it's a big data structure where you have to uh, clean a lot of data and, and identify what is relevant and not. Uh, but who will own the data? And who holds the data? And this is a relation to uh, either the, the, the city part or uh, is there any risk of um, uh, data privacy? Yes, uh, we have another issue here that there is a security. You are asking about the who owns. Data is shared between the port and the city, and the data is stored between, uh, in the port and the city as well. We have to provide a, a server in the uh, port for collecting all, all of the data. This data is also sending to the city. It uh, keeps uh, between the port and the city, and they are the backup of each other. So here we have to set a firewall and also the protocols for the access into the data. This data in the port is confidential and uh, it is called, it is just for the port, but port is part of the city. So for example, the municipality of the cities can access to this data, but it's the classified data, not all of the data. And also because we have two servers, because we have two hosts for this data, this data can be uh, can be the backup of each, uh, this service can keep the back of uh, each other service data. Uh, so here, by setting the protocols and uh, classifying the data, we can uh, get access the data to the each parties involved parties uh, related to that, uh, for example, uh, department, and also we can uh, you know keep our data secure. Okay. Yeah. Um. OK, that, that makes sense. Um, so uh, uh, your complex algorithm may be able to filter the data and uh, clean some of the uh, risky part out and then provide uh, data sets uh, that make sense to uh, work on uh, in the interfacing uh, analytics. Yes, actually. Yeah. Actually, our, uh, we are using the artificial intelligence and we are uh, yeah. defining the program based on the logic diagram. So we are not collecting the data. Also, we are providing the data. We are simulating the situation. 
to provide the best solution if this situation happens. Okay, and after that, we are defining an algorithm. But this algorithm, algorithm it is not rigid. This algorithm it is flexible. We use the real-time data to change this algorithm as it is necessary. Okay, yeah, that that looks that sounds to me like an edge solution. So that means that you on the on the edge on the devices themselves, you actually do analytics and then you push something back to the server. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, what I recommend is uh, this is the last presentation. We will take uh, a, a break uh, from the, the session from here, but I, I feel that uh, all the IPC member has been enabled to join in gorgeous room. I request kindly our student to wait here and we hopefully will be able to come out uh, quickly. We are a little bit behind the schedule, but it was more question that we expected and it was even more tolerant with time constraints. I feel that, uh, let's say, between 15 minutes, probably, we can come out. So please wait here, student. I invite vice versa. Um, me, Roberto, Giulio, uh, and um, there was even uh, Marco, Giovine, and Stefano Negrini, and I feel I mentioned everybody, but correct me if I'm wrong, among the two that are here, to move in the gorgeous. To move in the gorgeous, you have to click on Teams. You can leave this session open because you can switch between two. Click on Teams and look among the different channels, as they are called, or room. There is Gorgia Room, and if you go in Gorgia Room, I just create a new Gorgia Rooms pitch. IPC. So if you wait over here, we will be soon in the other one, I hope. Okay.
Hello? Hello, I'm back. Hopefully you can my voice. Hello, Professor, we hear you. Hello, Professor. Very good. I hope even my colleagues are coming back. Giulio? I'm back, Agostino and everybody. Ciao, Stefano, ben arrivato. Per Stefano Marco, no? Capito? No, c'è Marco anche è tornato pure lui. Benissimo. Allora che siamo tutti. Stefano, ci sei? Sì. Sì, volevo, ho detto Stefano, ma volevo dire Robert. Robert Dillon, ci sei? Sì, sì, ci sono, ci sono. Ok, very good. So, uh, I feel that we was... Uh, I'm sorry for being a little bit late. We are 10 minutes behind the schedule. Probably we arrive at 15. However, there was very nice presentation based on my personal feeling. I appreciate all presentation and uh, we had a, quite a discussion, even if it was in rush, as you can see from the time that we spent. Currently, what we do is that we will mention you, the, let me say, the first three selected pro pitch that will be required to give a final presentation on very short. This time will be very strict, as Cerberus will do in September in February 12, that will be done when we will make the final award in ceremony. And I can mention that we appreciate uh, all, everything everybody will be invited to say. But the, the first three, if you like, I mention are uh, Genoa, uh, let, let me go in alphabetical order, Genoa 3, that was efficient integration of renewable, Then we had the Genoa 4, Smart Fort, and then we have JCU, Enhancing Consumer Recycling. Okay. And um, so we, you was selected. Let's say that there was even very narrow following runners. And um, then what we do next? Okay. But the Genoa side, And in the reference to modeling uh, com and design complex system, we will uh, finalize uh, your uh, ranking by, by our side. Next time, uh, maybe I will send you some information. And uh, among the others, you are all invited to award ceremony because we will deliver even a certificate stating your quality and effort. And then among the first three, we'll give three awards. By the way, I can anticipate the sum of the company, including the San Paolo Bank. And Agostino, you lose your voice. <clears throat> I don't, know, I don't know if you get my voice. Am I crazy? Sì, è più bello. Sì, ci sto perché ho detto che ci sono milioni di dollari di prezzi. We have no correct. It's the moment of money. Disappear, you disappeared. <laughs> exactly. There are no million dollar reward, rewards, but I feel we'll give even something come in a, in a smart way during the awarding ceremony. So thanks again. I, I would like to invite uh, Robert Dillon to, to give, uh, to, to finalize and wrap up and anyone. Okay. You well, are welcome. Thank you very much for everyone who participated. Uh, yeah, personally, and I think everyone uh, in the committee really enjoyed all the presentation. They were all very informative. And uh, really, I can see that uh, all of you did some very good research and proposed your ideas in a very nice, uh, nice way, That's all very nice uh, pitches. So uh, yeah, we look forward now to the final phase uh, that will happen on February 12 uh, in the Shipping 4.0, and then uh, that will be the, uh, yeah, the uh, final pitch and then the award ceremony. And uh, let's see then in the end how it, how it will go. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, Stefano, vuoi dire qualcosa anche tu? Yes, I very, very, very fast. Uh, I also think uh, to thank everybody because uh, we rush, uh, you guys rush, uh, and in uh, such a short time uh, you put together 
uh, as Agostino mentioned, uh, all in all, uh, good quality uh, projects, uh, ideas. So a, a, a good, uh, a good uh, base, uh, just uh, something that came out among our discussion. Uh, uh, consider always uh, to point out in your projects uh, the, let's say, benefit on sustainability because this is uh, more and more important uh, overall. So good, uh, good job uh, to to all of you, and uh, uh, well, we we catch you in uh, two weeks' time for the for the final ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano, Michael, and. Uh, Eventually, even uh, I know just finished uh, Giulio and Marco. Do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, so uh, I must say that uh, all the presentations uh, they were very good, and uh, you all covered um, uh, very closely to uh, the current uh, demand within smart city projects. Um, so you also must understand that uh, port environment is actually part of a smart city. Uh, so uh, very well done. Um, I was uh, very satisfied uh, to uh, learn um, about your ideas and uh, your um, your different views. Uh, that was uh, that was actually uh, very inspiring. So thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Julia? She say no. It seems that is in a tesa. It was connected on the other line with me with WhatsApp. Any case, she say no. Mario, do you like to say anything? Uh, I would say that uh, I enjoyed all the presentation by all the other students, uh, and I participated uh, in this uh, joint uh, uh, experience with uh, James Cook University last year, and I would say that this year is coming out even better than uh, than uh, than last year. So I would say let's keep on, <laughs> on this way, uh, on uh, always better improvement. Very good, very good. By the way, Mario is one of our second year student that is going to is, is in currently internship in a center and is following even uh, just closing soon, uh, starting in a center while closing experience with a large uh, oil and gas offshore company in uh, working with Kuala Lumpur. Okay, um, so uh, Mario, could we dire qualcosa? I feel Marco. Yes. Marco, no, ho capito Mario, uh, sorry. Mario was before and now this Marco. Uh, yes, uh, only uh, thank you. It was very interesting for me. I'm learning uh, a lot. Very nice presentation. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, you have stimulated my curiosity. And uh, uh, I think that the curiosity is one of uh, uh, the most relevant uh, topic uh, uh, for uh, the future and uh, for face uh, uh, the incoming problems. So please, uh, uh, all, uh, to all the students, uh, be curious. Be curious not only on your specific topic, but uh, on uh, everything of the world, because the best way to manage problems is to know not only the problem, but also the surrounding environment of the problem. And the curiosity is the key of the knowledge. So I can only say this. And you have stimulated my curiosity. So thank you for uh, having do this. Thank you, Mark, for your contribution. Curiosity is fundamental, except if you are a cat. Because curiosity killed the cat. No, I'm just joking. This That's is true. <laughs> I have two cats. <laughs> <laughs> and also two dogs. <laughs> so. <laughs> good, good. so the dogs could have curiosity. Gods are very curious. Okay. And cats maybe even more, even maybe too much is an example of excessive curiosity. But in science, curiosity is very important as well as foundation, obviously. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to thank you all. I know it was long. I know that for some of you is already late afternoon and maybe, but uh, I, I really thank you. I will.
will send you to Stratego's guy a communication on the WhatsApp for finalizing, maybe a very quick meeting together to give you a feedback of how it was going and vice versa. I would like to thank all the students from Singapore for their wonderful work and as well as all our colleagues that have take time. Something to close, I would like to say, you as young scientists, engineers, managers, etc., should consider that some of the people around the table, like um, the people that are working in company, are dedicating this time because they like to be in touch with you, because there is a potential in young people, there is a potential in new idea, there is a potential on synergy between academic work, company work, institutions. And so this is, uh, for somebody could consider waste of time, and maybe there was even some waste, but uh, the fact they are around the table is a very meaningful to understand what is your potential value. And today I feel you have done something that demonstrates you deserve it, and you should continue this way because we should rely on people like you to create a better future for our town, for our port, for our nation, and for all the people that are goodwill. Thank you. So see you soon. Peace and love. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank Have you. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Goodbye. Don't be too crazy. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Ciao. Okay. Bye, bye, everyone. Ciao. Bye. 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 Thank you, Professor. Thank you. We are going to have a short. Break. Yes, if you like, we can join another one. I need just a call. We'll be very quick. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So we will go to complex everything. They can give you, they can give you, they can give you, they can give you, they can Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. John.